for today's beginner's class, there are a few things that we need to go over. We're going to review some of our basic kicks and talk about some of the details, the things that you need to do in order to get promoted with these basic kicks. We'll also go over some of our self-defense, keep practicing that so that when it's, you know, when it's time to do our self-defense, we really can remember it kind of on the fly. We don't have to stop and think because really that doesn't work. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about manners, right? And talking about how we, how we greet people and show respect to them, right? So as always, we're going to get started with some warm-ups, which helps to prevent injuries and gets us prepared for class. And then we'll get started from there. Okay, so before we get into the majority of class, we're gonna do a quick warm up, get our body ready for class, get moving. Right, warm ups are important for our heart, our muscles, our, our, all of our joints. Um, each one of these moves is gonna be about 30 seconds long. We're gonna be doing three of them. So let's get started. We're gonna start off with ski jumps, right? We're gonna go for 30 seconds, just jumping side to side. Right, make sure you're breathing, balancing on your feet, taking small jumps. Right, we're not trying to go super fast, or we're not going super far. We're just letting our body get moving. You can shake out your arms a little bit if you want. Right? You can wiggle a little bit in your upper body. Right? But just keep bouncing those feet side to side, side to side. All right, that's 30 seconds of ski jumps. Next, we're going to be doing some push-ups. As we do our push-ups, there are a few different ways. I'll cut in for you so you can see different angles. Hold on. So we're going to do 30 seconds of push-ups your way. Ready, set, and go. <clears throat> all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. The big thing you're aiming to do during your push-ups today is just to make sure you're getting that full range of motion, getting your chin to the floor. Whatever works for you. You may need to switch between different styles of push-ups. Like I said, I'm showing four of them on the screen now, but pick the one that works for you and you may change it, right? Maybe do five with your legs straight, Tell me your legs bent, whatever it is, that's fine. All right, and we're done with push-ups. Last warm-up move, we're gonna do some front kicks, alternating legs. All we wanna do is kick about belt height, one leg and the other leg, ready, set, and go for it. Nice and easy, make sure you're breathing, getting our body ready to do some martial arts, not hurting ourselves, staying safe, right? During your warm-ups is a good time to think about things like, am I keeping my hands up, right? Because you're not really working on speed, right? Think about maybe, am I bending my knee as I do my front kick, or am I keeping it straight? Almost there, and we're done. All right, so we're done with warm-ups. Now let's get ready for class. All right, let's talk front kicks and what do you need to do on a front kick to get promoted to white belt or yellow belt. Right. First thing, I'm going to show you a couple different directions. Get a get a sense of what a front kick looks like. Kick towards you. Okay. So, what are the four things? There are four. One, keep your hands up. Two, look at your target. Three, kick above your belt. Four, recover back. Let's explain what each of those four things mean. First, keeping your eyes on the target. Should be pretty self-explanatory. Wherever I'm kicking, I look at the thing, right? So if I'm kicking right at you, I look right at you. Okay, I don't want to have my head turned to the side. So people do this, start looking around in class. Since hey, when am I gonna give him a strike? Not today, because you're looking all around the room. Not safe, not good for accuracy. You don't want to do it. Second thing, keep your hands up. What's up mean? As high as your chin, cheek, this range, that's how high it is. All right, so if I kick, you can see my hands, they're not touching my face. You can touch your face, especially as big enough. If your hands are here, well, I'm not gonna say, wow, you don't get a strike. But you have to know the difference between your cheeks and your chest. I see people kick with their hands here because you can just kind of rest here, right? This is casual and restful. We don't want that in good defense. If your hands aren't up when you're kicking, you can get hit, so you gotta keep your hands up, okay? Next thing, when you kick, you got to keep your hands up as you're kicking. Very common people do this. Sensei, look, my hands are up. I want to strike. Well, mm, your hands were up at the beginning. They were up at the end. But in the middle, they were down there. Right? Keep them up. Third thing. Kick as high as your tummy. Now, if you kick higher, you're like, Sensei, I want to kick really high. 
fine. But it doesn't do anything for you, <laughs> okay? It's great. It's awesome. It shows you have great strength and balance, but it's not what you need. You need to kick size your tummy. Last thing, this is very important. You gotta kick and come back to where you started. So if I kick, I'm back in the same fighting stance. Some people do this, they kick, you fall over, right? Or they kick, do some weird dance move, right? Shows that you don't have the balance that you need to get promoted. So those four things are the four things we're gonna look for. We're gonna do some front kicks now. We're gonna do a few on each side, ready? Front kick one, front kick two, front kick three, front kick four, five, are you doing all the things? Six, seven, I hope you are, eight, nine, 10. Switch your legs, you gotta be able to do it on both sides. Same idea, ready, one, kick and come back, two, come back, three, four, you see my hands stay up, five, six, I come back to the same stance, seven, I don't fall all over the place, eight, I kick above my belt, nine, and of course I'm looking where I kick, 10. Okay, so if you're a white belt and you do those four things, you're good to go to earn your check for that part of your martial arts training. There's a lot of other things. But if you're a yellow belt, you need to add two things. One, a little bit of speed. Not a lot, a little, right? So when I kick, one of the things you can listen for if you're wearing pants, is your gi pants snap. Make a little noise, okay? When we're watching, if we hear that noise, oh, that person passed. We can also tell by speed, right? We can look at you like, that's fast. Okay, but it's hard for most people to say, oh, am I fast enough? Okay. Now, that doesn't mean, by the way, that you kick really fast like this. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is when you do a kick, you go faster than you can wait. And you kick, and you can wait. Okay. Second new thing for a yellow belt, trying to get an orange belt, is you have to chamber your knee, snap out your leg. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. When I do my front kick, it's not a straight leg. See how my leg is straight? By the way, my hands are down. I'm doing all sorts of things wrong, so I wouldn't get a strike for that. My knee bends, snaps out, comes back and comes down, like that. That's how you do a front kick. You've got to bend your knee if you're trying to get your orange belt, right? So let's try and remember those things. If you're a white belt, you're still working on I'm doing it the easy way. Fine. If you're yellow, do it the hard way. Good. Ready? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch your legs. Same thing. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay, so those things are the things you gotta make sure you're doing on a front kick. If you do them, you're on the right track for promotion, at least with this skill, but obviously there are a bunch more to be able to do, right? For now though, let's take a break from this, move on to something else for class. All right, this week we're talking about manners and continuing that discussion and as we know, manners is how we show the people around us that we care about them, right? And that they're important and their feelings are important. And there's an old expression which is, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. That first time you meet someone is very, very important. And a lot of people struggle with it. So what we wanna to do today is just talk about some of the things that you could do. And then I would encourage you to maybe practice this at home with someone else, right? Ask your mom to practice with you. Ask your dad to practice with you. Ask, I don't know, someone in your house to practice with you. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go over and introduce yourself. Don't start off with, who are you? Right? That doesn't seem very nice. Right? So you go over to them and say, hi, I'm Sensei Jeff. What's your name? Right? Great way to just start off a simple conversation. Obviously, don't say your name is Sensei Jeff unless you happen to be named Sensei Jeff. Use your own name. Right? So that's the first thing, is you just say hello to them. Now, most people, when you do that, are gonna say something like, hi, Sensei Jeff, I'm Fred. 
right? Now, hopefully they use their actual name, right? But whatever they say to you, whatever they tell you your name is, one of the big things you want to do is you want to remember that name, right? It's kind of not nice if people don't remember your name. I know some kids, you know, they, they get upset if someone forgets their name. Like, my name is Fred or whatever your name is, right? Because <laughs> lots of people are watching this video. Uh, so what you want to do is you're going to say their name back to them. Like, oh, it's nice to meet you, Fred. Right? So it'll sound sort of like this, right? First person says, hi, I'm Sensei Jeff. What's your name? I'm Fred. Nice to meet you, Fred. Right? And then the next thing that you're going to do is you're just going to ask them something, right? Like, oh, where do you go to school? Right? Or what grade are you in? Or, you know, how old are you? Or something like that. So, something nice. And it, it, an easy question. Don't give them like a tough quiz question. They're like, all right, do you know who the 13th president of the United States was? Right? You don't want to make it hard for them. Just something easy, just so they can feel comfortable and you show some interest in them. Right? So again, the three steps that we talked about. One, introduce yourself. Two, say their name back to them. Three, ask them a question about themselves. Right? So what I'm going to challenge you to do is go practice that with someone in your family. Say, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, whoever. Would you be willing to practice with me? I'm, I'm supposed to work on how to greet someone. Right? And then go and do that. Say, introduce yourself, right? Say their name, and then ask them a nice question about themselves. Find out something about them. All right? So that's our challenge for this week in terms of understanding manners and continuing to grow. All right? Let's keep moving on to the next part of class, though. Let's do some axe kicks now. When we talk about axe kicks, first of all, take a quick look, right? My leg is straight, comes up, comes down, step from the side, up, and down, right? Now, your axe kick, like most of your beginner kicks, have a few things that you need to work on in order for them to be ready for promotion as a white belt. First, keep your eyes on the target. Second, keep your hands up. Third, kick side your belt. Four, recover back. Right? Now, that's a pretty consistent theme throughout our kicks. Remember, hands up means as high as your chin or your cheeks. Eyes on target means you're looking at the target. Right? When you're kicking as high as your belt, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then recover back. Right? Make sure when you kick, you can see this better on the side, I find, that you come up and you come back to that same spot you started. Right? You don't want to end up really lungy out. And you don't want to land your feet together or land in front. Right? Kick this, that ain't it. Okay? So, Let's do some axe kicks. Bring them up, bring them down. Ready? And one, two, try and keep your eyes on your target. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch your legs, same idea. Now, just like with any of our kicks, if you kick higher, it's fine. But it's not the big thing, right? Too often I have beginner students who chase the wrong challenge. Like, I'm going to kick super fast, I'm going to kick super high, and they're forgetting to keep their hands up. They're forgetting to recover back, right? Put first things first. Do the most important thing, and you will get your stripes faster, I guarantee you, if you train smart instead of just training like a crazy person, right? So let's do some axe kicks on another leg. Ready? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now, continuing our theme from today of what do you need to do with yellow belt on that same beginner kick? Two things. One, kick faster, right? Just like with the, the front kick, you kick faster. Two, your leg has to go a little in and a little out, right? So if I bring straight up, straight down, it's okay, but my axe kick actually comes in a little bit to this side, and then comes out to that side. So it goes from here to here, right? By doing that, it'll let me have more power as I come up next to my target and I smash down on top of it, right? So let's do our axe kick. Think about if you're a yellow belt, bring it in and out, have a little bit of speed. If you're a white belt, you want that challenge, that's fine, but you gotta do all the basic things. Control your 
hands, look at your target, kick high, recover back. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch it up, same basic game. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, great job. Let's move on to the next part of class. All right, today we're gonna to work a little bit on self-defense and we're gonna be using some kind of like a small stuffed animal or a tennis ball or something like that in a moment. For now, I'm just gonna put that down. We're gonna quickly review our self-defense techniques. So we have two self-defense techniques that we need to do. We're gonna do each one of them three times, starting from your stay away stance. I'll show you once just to show you, and then we'll do it together. We're doing control one first. Okay, I'll show you the side as well. All right, dodge to my right and forward. Same combat, of course, blocking, and then I punch. So we're gonna do that one a couple times together, right? Three times to be exact, start in your stay away stance, dodge forward and to the right, do a middle block. Punch in chamber, All right? We're gonna do that again two more times. Dodge block, then punch chamber. Good, one more time without so much direction, go. Okay, so control one, hopefully that's pretty easy for you. If you need to review it, feel free to pause this practice a few more times. We're gonna keep moving forward. We're gonna go on to control number two now. Control number two, I'll show it to you a couple times, and then we'll do it together. Walk two hands, grab, chop, grab, and then that roundhouse style knee. And I'll show it to you from, hmm, I'll show it to you this side. Right, I'm gonna move forward, side, block with two hands, grab, chop with the opponent, grab the opponent's shoulder, knee them in the stomach, okay? So that's control number two. Let's do that three times. We start in our stay away stance. Touch. Oh, I made a mistake. Ha <laughs> ha. Trick me. Let's go control number two again. Dodge block with two hands. Grab, chop. Grab me. Good. Try it again. Ready? Control number two. Dodge block. Grab, chop. Grab me. One more time. Ready? Dodge block. Grab, chop. Grab, and me. Okie dokie. So, now for the challenging part. One of the things about self defense is we want to be able to do it when we don't have as much warning, where we don't have time to kind of think and prepare, right? Because if we have to stop and think, gather ourselves and prepare, that's not really how it works when it comes to defending yourself. And that's the goal of self-defense, is to learn how to actually protect yourself, right? Can you stay calm and do the right thing under some form of pressure? So today, we're gonna to be using our ball to just create a little distraction, create a little pressure. Here's basically how it's gonna work. You're gonna take your ball and you're just gonna to toss it up in the air. You're just gonna keep catching it. Now, in a perfect world, you're just catching with one hand. It requires more coordination, more concentration, and that's the point. While you're tossing it, you're just gonna to keep tossing over and over and over again, right? You have to wait for when I call. If I say control one, you have to stop what you're doing and do control one. So it might look like this. Whoop. Of course, don't drop it. <laughs> that's what it's saying, right? You'll be here. Try and catch it with one hand if you can. Control one. Oh. Right, and then you go back, pick up the ball, and you practice again. Control one. Dodge block. If you're still holding it, that's fine. You don't have to actually drop it. But if it's in the air, don't wait for it. Just go immediately. Okay? I could also say control two. If I say control two, you might have guessed right. You do control number two. Whichever one I say to do is the one that you should do. So I'm gonna do a few of these with you, right? And then I'll let you do a couple without me, right? So we start just tossing, right? You can use either hand. You can switch hands in the middle if you want, right? Start back and forth. Control one. And then go and get your ball or your teddy bear or whatever. I'm using my little Yoda ball, right? Which is oh, awesome. It's got ears. Good. Control two. Block, grab, chop, grab. Knee. 
and go back and start tossing again. Now, if you want to practice some more at home, a good way to do this is do the same drill, but ask someone in your family to surprise you with control one or control two. Control two! Block, grab, chop, grab, me. All right? That way, you know, it's more of a surprise. Good. Ooh. Control one! Okay. Now, the next couple I'm going to ask you to do without me because there's a little extra pressure when you have to remember the technique and you don't have to look at me to be, oh, which one is it? All right, so start tossing. All right, maybe I'll still toss because that's just kind of fun. Like throwing things up in the air. Hopefully not dropping them. Control one! Hmm, hopefully you did it. It's the one where you did one block and one punch. Good, and start tossing again. Oh, don't drop Yoda. Yoda don't like that. <laughs> Good, and control two! Two hands, grab, chop, grab me. Hopefully you did it. Let's go two more times. Keep tossing. Keep tossing. Keep tossing. Keep tossing. Control one! Hopefully it looked like this. All right. Keep tossing. Keep tossing. Control two! All right. Hopefully it looked a little bit like that. Good. And control one! All right. So... That's a nice way of challenging yourself, of trying to switch from doing one task that requires some coordination to suddenly testing to see if you can do your self-defense, or if you have to stop and be like, oh man, what was control one again? If you're having a hard time making that transition from doing one thing to the next, it's an excellent indicator that you don't quite have the mechanics of doing the technique down. You remember it, you know it, but you're not good enough at it, okay? As you practice it enough times, it starts to become natural, you don't have to stop it. All right, so good job on your self-defense day. Let's keep moving on to the next part of class. All right, we're gonna review four main punches that we're gonna be doing, which is a, a jab across, a lead hook, and a backhand uppercut, all right? Those tend to be the, the four most common punches that we're gonna be throwing in, in class, and self-defense, and things like that. So we're gonna go over them, we're gonna go over some of the hand details to make sure you know the little things, right? Like where does your elbow go, where does your hand go, in order to really feel good about these strikes. So we're gonna start off with our jab, right? As we do our jab, we start off in our fighting stance. We have our hands up by our face, right? Now if you look at it from the side, you can see one of my hands is a little bit in front of my face, one hand is close to my face. That's kind of what we want. They start up by our, like our chin or our cheek, not down by our chest, right? So that's, that's basic for pretty much every punch that you're gonna do. When you do your jab, the thing I want you to focus on today is that your elbow goes up, not that your elbow goes out, all right? So see the difference between this and that, all right? That's one of the things that we're gonna look for as we evaluate someone for stripes. So let's see your jab. We're gonna just punch straight ahead. We're doing 10 again. Ready, one, two, make sure that elbow goes up. Three, four. Now there are things going on with your legs, five, but we're not really focusing on that right now. Six, four, Focusing on, does your elbow go up? Eight, nine, 10, good. And switch your legs to the same basic idea. Make sure it comes up, ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Okay, now, there are a couple of reasons why you want our elbow to come up. It's in a better defensive position for a longer period of time. It's still defending through this range of motion. As soon as it comes out here, we're exposed, right? It's also harder to see it starting, right? This is much easier to see if you're facing me in a sparring match or something like that than this is, right? This is hard to perceive, this is easy to perceive. So you don't wanna have your elbow flare out as you throw your jab. Now we're gonna throw our cross. When we throw our cross, we're gonna just make sure it goes straight and it comes back. So many people follow through down Right, or they let their hand kind of wobble down. We don't want that. We want to come straight and straight, straight and straight. Let's do a few. Ready? And one, two, three, four. Turning your body. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. We're gonna to switch to use our other hand. I'm gonna do these sideways so you get a different point of view of it. Right, as I do my cross, I twist and I come back. One, twist, come back. Two, 
three, four, five. I'm gonna turn, show you from the other side. We're gonna do five more. And six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna talk about our lead hook, right? Now, when you throw a lead hook, and this is true for both the lead hook and for the uppercut, it's important how much you wind up and how much you follow through. Now, winding up is basically like if you play any sports, like I wind up and then I throw, right? It's an important part of throwing. It's an important part of throwing a punch where it helps you to generate power, but you haven't thrown it yet, okay? And then the follow through is when after the, you, know, you let go of the ball, right? How much more does your body keep moving? Because you have momentum. Right? There's a lot of physics there if you don't understand or about, okay? When I throw my hook, the first part is the wind up. I want to get my hand just either in front of my shoulder or slightly outside. So you can see it. When I'm here, I wind up about that much for my hook. Not this, right? You can see how there's this big gap between my shoulder and my hand where I really wind up, and this is more like a wild punch, and my arm gets pretty straight. I want to keep my arm pretty bent. So you see I wind up, my arm is tight to my body. If you look at it from here, it's pretty tight to my body. If you look at it from this side, pretty tight to my body, okay? So we wind up, and then when we throw our hook, our elbow basically stops in front of our face, okay? You don't want to go all the way through, right? That's too much of a follow through. We want to keep it pretty controlled here and stop, right? So we're going to do some lead hooks, wind up, and then stop your follow through right there. Now you'll notice I'm still looking forward. So let's do it again too. I don't let my head turn. Right? That's another little detail. I kind of keep my head on the target. Now we can do things where we move our head a little bit, but we don't want to turn our head away, right? So you can see that time I move my head a little bit, but I definitely am looking at you and you should be looking at me. We're going to do five more. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, pretty good. Switch your legs, okay? Same basic concept, but I wanna add in one little thing. When I throw my hook, you can see my arm is kinda of like halfway out, right? If you look at my arm, it's bent that much. I do not want it to be too far, and I don't want it to be too close. We're not doing a really tight hook, and we're not doing a really wide out one. Kind of in the middle is where kind of our basic hook should be for you, right? So we sit up in our fighting stance here and hook, right? I think I'm gonna switch sides, I'm sorry. Ready? And wind up a little bit, throw your hook. Wind up, throw your hook. Keep going, wind up a little bit. Stop your follow through, again, elbows in front of your face, not too far. Ready? Let's do five a little faster, one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going on to our backhand uppercut now. Last punch that we're really gonna be doing today. When I do this backhand uppercut, how much does my hand drop down? Now, I see kids all the time do this big wind up. They come all the way down like they're trying to, I don't know, like they're throwing a softball underhand or something like that. I don't know what they're doing. Right? And then they like throw way up in the air, sometimes even spin and jump like Mario or something, right? We don't want that, right? We want to come down to about here and we come up to about here. What are the two here's there? First one, solar plexus. If you don't know where your solar plexus is, it's the part where if you touch the bone in the center of your chest and it goes down until it gets to that squishy part, that's your solar plexus, right? Uh, and then the top of your head is the second here. It goes up to about your forehead. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but about that, right? So here we come down a little bit to about our solar plexus height, and then we come up to about our forehead height. You can see my face disappears. I'm still here though, right? So I'll turn a little bit so you can see the height better. Come down and come up. You can see that's about the same height as my forehead. Down and come up, about the same height as my forehead. Let's do five. One, two, three, four, five, 
Okay, switch your legs. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna be, again, at that same kind of an angle. Hopefully you can see how high it is, still see me, right? Come down a little bit, about as high as our solar plexus. We come up about as high as our forehead. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so those are four basic punches that we do really frequently in martial arts class together, right? Okay, today, folks, for our final challenge, folks, for our final challenge, we're going to be working on hooks and crosses and a little bouncy ball challenge, right? So this is always a challenge of speed if you've ever done one of these bouncy ball challenges before. And basically, the way it works is this: you set yourself up in a fighting stance. You're going to hold the ball in your back hand, the one that you're going to end up doing the uppercut with, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to drop it. Once you drop it, you're going to do your hook, your uppercut, and then you're going to get the ball. Okay. Now. The objective here is to get the ball in two bounces or fewer, right? One or two bounces is good. More than that, not good, okay? Now, if you're at home and your ball's not that bouncy, you might want to hold it a little bit higher, okay? Or if you have a, a really squishy floor, some of you have mats at home. If you're practicing on a mat, the ball does not bounce very well at all. But I'll be holding it about here, right? And like I said, you drop, hook, uppercut, and get it, okay? And remember, can only bounce one or two times to be done properly, right? So what we're gonna be doing is this is about a two minute challenge. And what you wanna be able to do is do your hook uppercut, get the ball in one or two bounces five times on each side. That's a total of 10, right? You have two minutes, we're getting ourselves set up, ready, set, and go. Hook uppercut, good, I got it. Ready, and drop, hook uppercut. Now, things that you're looking for on this is that you're looking for good form on your punches. Hook, uppercut. Oh, that one I didn't get because I was talking too much and going slow. Right? You want to make sure you still have that tight hook, wind up, follow through that we talked about. The hook, uppercut, and get it. That one I got. Ready? And hook, uppercut, and get it. Right? Again, hook, uppercut, and get it. More practice makes us more better. I've lost count of how many I've done. I've gotten four. Hook, Get it. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my other side. If you're ahead of me, great. You're doing five on each side. If you're not ahead of me, you're falling behind, that's okay too. Right? Do what's right for you. We got two minutes. Well, we got about a minute and ten seconds left. Ready? Drop, hook, uppercut. Get it. That one's good for me because it was two bounces. By the way, if you want to make this really hard, do it in one bounce. Now it's hard. Ready? Hook, uppercut. Get it. That's two on this side. Again, hook, uppercut, got it, and hook, uppercut, got it. The other thing you can do to make it hard, do four punches, do three punches, if you want to challenge yourself a little bit. Ready, hook, uppercut, got it, all right, I think I'm done, if not, well, that's okay, I'm going to keep going anyway, hook, uppercut, got it, okay, I can do a couple harder ones maybe, challenge myself to do three punches, hook, uppercut, hook. And hook, uppercut, hook. That's hard. Alright, we got about 20 seconds left. Hook, uppercut, hook. Oh, we got it. Hook, uppercut, hook. I don't like that hook. That was kind of sloppy. I wouldn't count that for myself. Ready? Hook, uppercut, hook. There you go. I feel good about that one. We got five seconds left. Hook, uppercut, hook. Alright. So, hopefully you made it. If you didn't, like I said, you can always pause this and go back to it and practice, practice, practice. Alright, everybody? Great job today. Looking forward to seeing you in class soon. Bye-bye.